We had the weigh-in for Deontay Wilder versus Gerald Washington yesterday. Wilder weighed in at 222 pounds, which is pretty normal for him. He's a tall, lanky guy and naturally slim. So 222 is well within the normal Wilder range. He was actually lighter than that when he fought Stavern for the WBC title. And anyway, Washington weighed in at 239 pounds. That is the lightest of Gerald Washington's career. And when you consider the fact that the guy is six foot six inches tall, 239 pounds is pretty light too. Obviously nowhere near as light as Wilder, but you know, that's still light. Uh, Washington is in fantastic condition. Both of these guys are in fantastic condition. And in an age where heavyweights are often not that well conditioned, uh, it's good to see two guys actually come in as athletes. A lot of people are very dismissive of Washington's chances in this fight because I've mentioned this before. When it comes to boxing, people act as though uh, notoriety in terms of your name, your fame is a reflection of how good you actually are. And that's not always the case. This is a mistake that boxing fans make a lot of the time. When a guy is not really well known, they automatically assume, well, he can't fight. Or else I would have heard of him. <laughs> there are a lot of fighters out there who are very good, who are dangerous, that you never heard of. And when they get an opportunity, they prove it. Adonis Stevenson used to be one of those guys. I remember when Stevenson was about to fight Chad Dawson and the almost the entire boxing community on YouTube totally dismissed Stevenson's chances against Dawson. I'm not saying everybody. There was me and a couple of others who felt like Stevenson was very dangerous. Because I was following Stevenson's career before he fought Chad Dawson. I was following him since he started working with Manny Stewart at the Crunk Gym. Because Stewart was saying very good things about Adonis Stevenson. And I felt like, you know what? If Stewart is singing his praises, then this is somebody I have to take note of. So I started watching Stevenson from then. And when the Dawson fight came around, I was like, you know what? Stevenson is dangerous. I've seen this guy knock people out. He's got a very, very fast, powerful left hand. Uh, Dawson's coming off a loss, a stoppage loss at that. This is no foregone conclusion at all. But as I say, the majority of the boxing public and the boxing channels and everybody else felt like it was easy work for Chad Dawson because they hadn't heard of Stevenson before because he was unknown. Don't worry about if somebody's unknown. Worry about what they actually do in the ring stylistically, what abilities they have. And as far as Amir Mansour, he's nearly as tall as Wilder. There's only like an inch in height difference uh he's strong he's in shape and he's a guy who is a cerebral heavyweight now that doesn't always make for the most entertaining fights but it does mean that he's conscious of not making mistakes and technically he's not bad i'm not going to say he's the greatest heavyweight you've ever seen but technically he's not bad so when you've got somebody like wilder who often gets criticized for his technique and you've got a big guy in there with him who's athletic, who's strong, who's in shape, that is very mindful of his technique and his strategy, I think it's potentially dangerous for Deontay Wilder. I really do. The only thing which I'm concerned about with Washington, well, not the only thing, but the main thing I'm concerned about is his, I don't want to say lack of desire, maybe his lack of, his potential lack of, aggression in the ring because I do think at some point against Wilder he's going to need to take the ball by the horns if he's going to win the fight because Wilder is a very very fiery character and if you're beating him he's not going to go down without a fight you know he's going to throw everything but the kitchen sink at you in fact everything including the kitchen sink at you to make sure he holds onto his belt Wilder is a very mean character in the ring <laughs> you know you say what you like about him he is vicious so uh you know, Washington's going to need to bring some heart to the table, not only skills, but just to put it in perspective, Washington is a guy who holds people like Andre Ward, Floyd Mayweather, Bernard Hopkins up as role models for himself. You know, Lennox Lewis and other technical fighters. These are the guys that Washington has come out publicly and said that he models himself on these kind of guys. He don't look at a Mike Tyson or a George Foreman or, you know, any of these kind of heavyweights or those kind of fighters and say, oh, I'm trying to model myself after them. No, 
He models himself after guys who are technical, like an Andre Ward, like a Mayweather. Guys who are not worried about knockouts. Guys who are just thinking about minimizing their mistakes and capitalizing on the opponent's mistakes. So bear that in mind as we go into this fight. Um, I'm I'm interested. I'm intrigued. Lou DeBella, the promoter of Deontay Wilder, says he's more worried about Washington than he was about Warcheck, the previous opponent who, or the previous scheduled opponent who failed a drug test. And I think he's genuine when he says that. I personally believe that Wilder, uh, that Washington is a lot more dangerous than Warcheck would have been. And um, yeah, I, I think it's going to be interesting to see what happens here. I do not think it's the foregone conclusion that a lot of people seem to be saying although with Deontay Wilder's power he could make a complete fool out of what I just said there <laughs> all it takes is one big Wilder right hand and Washington could be on Queer Street uh, unless he's got a serious chin so I guess we'll find out soon enough let me know what you think of this fight people do you like me believe that Gerald Washington is a live underdog as Richard Dwyer says and in fact I watched Richard Dwyer's video on this fight and he's actually picking Washington to win the fight hedged with Wilder by KO. I don't know, uh, Dwyer has a reputation for picking underdogs and whatnot, but the way he broke the, you know, broke down the fight, I thought was very interesting. He broke down Washington's character, you know, in terms of the things he's been through to actually get to where he is today. And I think those are very, very astute observations by Richard Dwyer. The fact that this guy was in the Marines, that he went through uh, a football career, uh, so on and so forth and he did it in an unconventional fashion which required a lot of character for him to do so so yeah Dwyer is impressed by his character to get where he is right now at 34 years of age and I think you know that there's probably something to that so yeah I'm looking forward to the fight I'm interested to see how Washington does against Wilder remember Wilder hasn't fought anybody like Washington before he hasn't really fought many, you know, too many tall, tall guys like himself. So it will be something a little different, even just from a a visual point of view. Seeing somebody on Wilder's level, just as tall as he is, seeing how Wilder copes with that type of scenario, you know. We'll find out shortly what's going to happen. But let me know what you feel in the comment section. How's this going to go down? It's your boy Hatman, I'm out.